It's just a lesson. It's just a lesson. <laughs> So the first thing we're starting off with is just a little warm up on the flat with our horses, as well as a discussion of dress code and uh, other things related to uh, these different classes that we'll talk about today. So usually what a judge will say is to please enter the arena tracking left. So what that means is your left boot and your left shoulder needs to be on the inside of the arena. And then when you enter, you want to be kind of where we are now, just kind of at that entrance. And you can come in as well, because I will be um, discuss discussing things on the move here. So the first thing I want to uh, talk about before we even talk about the stuff that I have is Fawn. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about uh, what you already know about Realistic Roleplay showing, even if it's not a whole lot? Uh, I just want to hear what, what you know so far. Uh, yes. Uh, the other day when me and Gia was going over it, I believe she said it was 2.5 uh, meters away from the fence. So you kind of want to be close to the fence, but just make sure don't run into the fence. Um, also, the distancing, basically, another thing Gia was saying was to kind of stay away from people. So kind of like now is a little bit, or actually it's quite close. Um, and... Uh, I'm so sorry, Gio. I, my brain is not here with me today. But, and also, like, going around people when you want to, like, you don't, like Gio was saying, you don't want to be, like, close to people, so you kind of, like, cut off from them and cut to where it'd be kind of across the arena to where you're not touching nobody. Main thing was to not touch nobody. Yeah. And then yeah. we kind of like discussed the different outfit things. Um, they told me that the saddle pad was pretty good. And I learned that boots were not really a thing needed for flats since that's not usually, or as far as I remember, that boots are not for flats. Yeah. So that's really good to know that you've already got a pretty solid foundation of flat information, I guess. Um, so I do want to also ask you, what got you into realistic roleplay showing and uh, this community? So honestly, I have been like, because I'm going to be honest, my content, like there's different things. Like, and it's hard with SSO, like, because... New horses come out certain times, new areas come out certain times, and new quests come out at certain times. And it's not necessarily boring, but it's kind of hard to find something to do. And I've always kind of found interest in, like, seeing people do flat shows. I always had, like, club mates who would do them. And it was pretty interesting to watch them, like, dress up and be fancy and... When I had my own horses, I wanted to get into showing, but I no longer own my horses, so I wasn't able to do that. So I really got into it and was like, you know what, I want to try this in SSO and see if I can give it a shot. That's really cool to hear. Yeah, I uh, yeah. kind of have a, a similar story almost. Um, I don't have access to horses. I haven't had access to horses in a while. So Star Stable is the closest thing I've had to that. So joining this community specifically, I think it was Geo and um, Bambi Pretty Love actually, who kind of helped me, you know, get started. But um, yeah, I'm really uh, interested in the competitive aspect as well as the, the social aspect of it as well. So it's really great to be working with both Geo and Fawn for today. So the first thing I want to start off with is um, dress code. Um, so dress code is roughly the same for all classes related to hunters, equitation, um, anything like that. Um, if you'd like also too, we can pick up the truck. Um, just warm up laps. This is not necessarily a, um, a flat class right now. But um, yeah, the general gist of the dress code is you're wanting a nice show jacket, uh, long breeches, uh, boots and helmet, of course, and gloves. Um, for these types of classes, we're generally looking for a brown English jumping saddle or and a brown English bridle. They do not allow bozels or um, I don't think they take hackamores or um, dropped nosebands. I think those types of bridles are banned. 
And so another thing that is helpful to know is that whatever saddle or bridle that you choose, the metals of those um, of those pieces of tack should match. So I'm going to just get down off of my horse and you guys can keep trotting or you guys can come up to me and, and look if you want. But as I go into photo mode here, if we look at the stirrups of my saddle, the stirrups are silver and therefore the the bit of my bridle should also match that color. Um, so I have a silver bit and silver stirrups. Saddle pad wise, um, they just don't want saddle pads that are big like this for hunter classes. They're gonna want a half pad or what Fawn has. Um, I think they call it a numna in, in Star Stable, but this is, I think, what do they call this? I think they call this like a gel pad or something. So uh, as long as it's the smaller of the saddle pads, also like what Geo has, that will work great. Um, in terms of your characters, um, and we can continue on the trot here as well. In terms of the character's outfit a little bit more, um, color choices matter. So in these hunter classes, it also depends a little bit on if you're doing like a hunter, um, a hunter class versus equitation class, those are different. Um, hunters are a little bit more open, so you can have burgundy, black, uh, gray, navy blue, uh, dark brown, and I think hunter green as well. Um, any other colors are generally uh, not accepted, but if you're looking at an equitation class, they're going to ask you for black or navy blue only. Um, let's see, breeches. I would say just make sure they are a nice tan or beige color. Um, if they're kind of on the yellowish side or if they're white, they usually don't take those. Um, the ones that I'm wearing right now, I believe these are like limited. These are the Baroque style pants from like the Equestrian Festival, I think. And then what I saw Gio and Fawn wearing, you guys looked fine in that. And then your gloves, just make sure those are closed fingers. No open, uh, no open finger gloves for that. Um, whenever you're ready, you guys can pick up your canter. So that's it on the basic dress code. I do want to say... Um, for your horse's mane and tail. The safest bet is to put your horse's mane in button braids. Uh, so I think both of you guys, well, I think Geo's horse's mane is roached. So some classes, that's okay, a roached mane style. So if it's like a green class or a, I think they call it B and C level classes. If you go to Hunter Jumper Federation of Jorvik, um, they will allow a roached style, but uh, in my personal recommendation, I do recommend just putting your horse up in button braids uh, for all shows. One thing I will note, I don't know if it still exists, there is a mane and tail glitch where if you buy the proper mane and tail right on the day of the show, right before you check in to the show, sometimes it will not show up on the judge's screen. It will look like the default mane style. So I do recommend if your horse's mane is not already braided, get the braids a day before the show at a minimum so that way they show up on the judges screens and we can come down to the walk and reverse directions at the walk so when you reverse directions i'll say this now you want to do a nice big shape kind of like a dressage bear but very big and we'll just warm up in the opposite direction okay so any questions on dress code Okay, so I probably should have a brown bridle and saddle, correct? Yes. Um, what okay. I'm currently Perfect. wearing, if you'd like to uh, match those, I'm wearing the Rex Stamper Walnut Bridle and the Rex, no, the Walnut Classical Jumping Saddle. Um, there are also some saddles, I don't know if I can show you in the global store, that are kind of an orangey color, um, avoid those. So we're looking for like a deep walnut-y, um, kind of medium chestnut kind of look. Um, I don't think I can find it right now, but pretty much like anything that's like almost copper, um, you don't want those. Okay. Because I think I have some but I was like, you know what, the black matches, because I thought, like, maybe... Because my thought process was to match at least the boots and the gloves 
do the bridle and saddle. Yeah, that's totally understandable. I don't know why that was going to press this. Yeah, I'm not totally sure because the the showing organizations try to mimic real life as much as possible. Now, I'm not totally sure why um, the choice is to use brown versus black, uh, but if you want, you know, you, you would only get minus two points off for each dress code error, which would be okay if it was just one one piece of tack or outfit that was missing, uh, but just keep in mind um, brown is considered standard. And I'll move on to the next topic here. Uh, so, tail ribbons. So the ribbons that some people will wear on their horse's tails is for roleplay purposes, but it also is a factor in the judging. There's not a whole lot of stuff that Star Sable offers that helps judges, in the sense that, like, you can't really tell a horse's rhythm, you can't really tell a horse's, you know, energy, you know, you know? personality and things like that. Uh, mm -hmm. So having a tail ribbon is kind of the closest thing we can get to, uh, you know, personalities and things like that. So the number one piece of advice I can give to you is if a person is wearing a tail bow, no matter what color it is, you stay away from them. So red, a red oh, tail bow red. means that a horse's, a horse will kick. Okay, so they'll buck, they'll kick, whatever. So that's probably like the most kind of quote unquote dangerous tail bow to be aware of. But they can also wear green for being a green, very new horse blue for being a stallion, pink for, I think, a moody mare, white also means something. I don't quite remember what it is, but those are the tail bows that people can wear. And so during a flat class, yeah, during flat classes, that's where the tail bows matter the most. So in general, um, what I recommend is to be like three or four horse lengths behind that person give them space if you absolutely have to be behind them if you can absolutely avoid being anywhere near them get away from them now obviously horses aren't gonna kick they're not gonna bite or anything like that but again for judging purposes it's best to just stay away from them moving on to the types of classes so this is where um a lot of people as well as i in the beginning found it very confusing to know like what are we being judged on how does a class work and things like that let's talk about the different types of flat classes where you're not going over any jumps or anything so first we start off with a pleasure class so a pleasure class includes a walk trot portion then a walk trot canter and then a walk go as you please so for each of those portions, you're generally, you know, you're going around the arena, you're following the instructions of the judges of what they ask you to do. Um, and they're, it's very hard to judge, you know, because all the horses are the same speed, all the horses move pretty much the same way and stuff like that. So it's pretty subjective uh, when the judges look for that. In a walk, walk trot class, you're only going to be obviously doing a walk and trot and you'll be going in both directions. Um, you probably will not do any halting, but you'll probably, you know, uh, change directions at least once. Then in a walk trot canter class, you're going to be going at a walk trot and or canter and moving in both directions for that as well. Finally, for a walk go as you please class, uh, you will be demonstrating a walk and then the go as you please portion, you can choose between a trot or canter. Most of the time people will choose to go at a trot just because it's easier to control uh, as well as usually it's the horse's best looking gait but that is up to you um, on what you decide is the best gait because the go as you please that's kind of a almost like a creative thing like you are showing off your horse's best movements. So then there is a regular under saddle class. So for a regular under saddle class, that usually is attached to an over fences class. If you guys want to come down to a trot, you can. So an under saddle class is, uh, it can depend on what the judge, uh, I think, will do. It can be the first class and then the over fences class or vice versa. So here, this is where they're going to have you do a walk, trot, canter. Uh, they may ask you to do a working canter as well. So a working canter uh, would be basically your extended canter or the fourth gate up from the halt. So I'm going to demonstrate that right now on the camera. So um, 
this would be the working canter or extended cam ca camera extended canter in the gate ui it's considered a gallop but just know it's four up from the halt so that is a under saddle class yeah. then you have equitation on the flat so equitation on the flat is very similar except they may ask you to do other things they may ask you to halt and they may ask you to back yeah. up so when they do that yeah. there's some different rules for that but i won't get too deep into them but um basically the the pleasure yeah. is is like the first step and then you kind of have the under saddle which is maybe a little more complicated uh and then you have the equitation on the flat which is having the most involved one where you're talking about the uh, the walk the walk to trot and then the trot to canter i believe it was mm -hmm. the, that part i don't know why my brain like fried on that and did not want to like it did not want to like take in that part of the information. Sure, no problem. So in a walk trot class, you're only gonna be demonstrating the walk and the trot, no faster. And then a okay. walk trot canter, you're gonna demonstrate the walk trot and canter. So all three of those gates. Uh, you can come down to a walk here during this warm up as well. Yeah, walk, go as you please. You're at a minimum, you're gonna demonstrate the walk. And then when they call for a go as you please you can demonstrate the trot or the canter for your horse let's quickly talk about gate call outs because depending on the class that you'll have they will call different gates differently so right now we're all at the walk so all classes will call this the walk if we go up to the next gate and you can pick up the trot as well um they will call this a rising trot in an equitation class or they will call this a regular trot in an under saddle or pleasure class. The next gate, our canter, if you want to go back up to canter. Your third gate in a equitation class, equitation on the flat, they're going to call this a collected canter, collected canter. Versus an under saddle or a pleasure class, they will call this a regular canter. And we haven't really done this in the warm up, but you guys can move into it now. This is going to be your working canter. Uh, I believe for uh, equitation and then extended canter for uh, all other classes. Although in a pleasure class, you most likely will not demonstrate this gate. I will say though, that sometimes what they do, if you're demonstrating the working canter, or I think they will call it an extended canter in an undersaddle, undersaddle class. I'm not totally sure. Um, I'd have to look at judging guidelines again. But what they will do sometimes is they will separate the class. So if there's a class of 15 riders, what they'll do is they will take out like five or six extra riders from that class of 15 and ask them for the working canter. Just so that because it's so fast, right? Imagine if there was 10 more of us in this arena right now, right? That it would be hard. So I think yeah. that's, that's part of it, but also too, um, it's kind of just narrowing down the judging a little bit. Also to answer your question, they would call it the extended canter, I believe. Ah, thanks Gio. to you. Yes. Um, yeah, of course. I think they're pretty much good. I mean, because anything that you need to go to, they pretty much say, like, the main thing, like, the walt, the trot, and the canter. So I think I'm pretty good on that part. When starting any type of flat, whether it's equitation on the flat or under saddle or pleasure, um, like I said in the beginning, they're going to ask you to please enter the arena tracking left. Keep in mind, we're only three right now. On a real show, there's going to be 15 or... 12 or so and that's a lot of people in an arena like this okay in the riding arena obviously it's going to be a lot bigger but out here this is kind of on the smaller side so what i recommend they are not judging you right now run 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 to your spot they are not judging you so they do not care if you run to your spot because spots will fill up quickly and you need to get on the rail as soon as you can okay so yep gallop 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 go 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 yes good I do not care where you go, as long as you find a spot quick. Uh, and you can you can jump into the arena if you need to, 
right? Oh, I forgot you can do a trot jump now. Hehe. <laughs> so if you're on if you're like over here, for example, they don't they don't really care, I don't think, if you're at the entrance or not, as long as you have checked in, right? Once you've checked in and stuff like that, you're good. As long as you exist somewhere, you're fine. And if you enter the arena by jumping into it, totally fine. They're not judging you. Now, it's only when they start to say something like, all right, riders, you are now being judged right. at the walk. That's when you gotta, you know, start paying attention and not be fooling around. <laughs> um, so the next thing that I want to talk about is finding your spacing when there's a big, huge, you know, group of people in here. So for example, I want you to stay fun here on the wall and then I'm gonna hop in front of you. So right now I'm probably inside of you. On my screen, I'm not due to, you know, screen delay. So they're not judging you right now. So you are allowed to curl if you need to get away from me to, to gain space. Okay. It's better to do that. I'll let you finish your curl. Oh, yep. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's better to do that than to do this. Than to halt. Oh. Because yeah. that... Okay. I know a curl yeah. would lead you know? to a ripple effect too, but halting is, is arguably worse than doing a curl. Because at right. least with a curl, you're still on the move. When you halt, mm -hmm. you, you stop moving and you stop the rest of the line. So those are just some personal tips, as well as it just kind of helps everybody else to keep moving to get that flat class started. Next tip that I have for you is if you, and this will get into the passing and stuff like that, um, that Gio talked a, a little bit about. I'm sure she mentioned it, but do not ever do curls while you're in the class. Okay, so if you need to like slow down and they've already started judging you, you will get like several points off for doing that uh, because that's considered too small of circling. So when you circle, you want to do a nice tapping, do a tapping nice. rhythm. Tap, 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 tap. So I think they're asking for a walk circle to be about three times the size of a regular curl. And I like what I'm seeing over there. Very nice. And then as you increase gates, your circles are going to get bigger. So it's a gentle rhythm. Tap, 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 tap. They don't want to see like any harsh movement. Now they, they kind of can't see that anymore just due to the star stable bending update, but um, no curls. That's, <laughs> that's the big, big picture here. Uh, okay. One other thing I want to talk about is jumps. So come on over to the preset board, put on number A. Uh, number A? Okay. Preset A. Number A? Yeah. Because <laughs> we're, we're going to use this one anyways for the course. So All right. uh, the last thing I want to talk about in the flats portion before we talk about over fences stuff um, is yeah. if there is a yeah. flat class attached to an over fences yeah. portion. So the two classes, over fences and under saddle, go together. If they go together like that, the jumps have to stay up during the flat class. Right now, during the big warm-up that we had, we didn't have the jumps up. But if the two classes are attached like that, um, then they have to stay up. So they will judge you based on your navigation of the arena with the jumps on. So for example, if you like come over here and collide through that fence, or you circle around and ride through the standard, um, you will get points off for that, for sure. So basically, when you make your circle, kind of like try to avoid hitting all of the fences? Yes, exactly. So if you have to circle, cut or pass, or anything like that, with a flat class attached to an over fences portion, yes, you must avoid those jumps. One more thing. Sorry, this, I promise, will be the last thing. <laughs> uh, go ahead and reset, okay. reset the, the board to uh, blank. How do you know when to cut, pass, or circle? Um, so my personal tip is, is the following scenario. So for example, let's say I'm behind Geo and Geo's horse is really, really slow and you are in front of me like that. Okay, so Fawn is in front of Geo and therefore I don't have any space because if I were to just plop myself in right here, I would be cutting off Geo due to screen delay. So, in this instance, 
if the spot I want to occupy in front of Geo, because I should mention also too, your goal is to stay on the rail as much as possible. If you're if you're on the inside, like this, on the quarter line, they will call this the quarter line for the entire class. That's not ideal. They want you on the rail. So, okay. So, let me come back. If the spot that I want is occupied, so Fawn is occupying the spot that I want, I'm... And there's space on the other side of the arena, so where the entrance is, if there's space on the other side of the arena, I am going to cut. Cut straight across the arena, and then continue in the same direction. If, for example, Fawn, uh, go ahead and stand behind me. And I don't care if you're far away from me or anything, I just need to open that spot. So if the space in front of me that I want in front of Geo is open, I'm going to try to pass. So I'm going to pass Geo, and I'm going to get back on the rail. Can I have then uh, Fawn put your, put your horse here, but then take your character over like towards like the entrance, kind of. I don't really care how close or not you are, but... Just to have two bodies. If the spot I want is occupied, in this case by Fawn's horse, and there's a lot of people on the other side where Fawn's character is, I'm gonna circle. Okay, so when I circle, if I'm at the canter at least, I'm gonna make myself all the way around about here-ish, and try to aim myself back to where I was before. Versus with the cut, I kind of end up somewhere else, right? The end of my cut is on this side of the arena, right? Versus the circle, you're trying to... In, in my opinion, in my experience, you're trying to end up back in the same spot because both spots are occupied, right? So you're trying to make as much space and find space as much as possible. So those are the three scenarios that I typically use when in a situation like that. Or, of course, if there's a horse with a tailbow on, then you have to use those strategies as well to avoid them. Sometimes it can be tough to figure out what you have to do. And people, you know, will panic. And I panic sometimes, depending on what happens. And sometimes it happens. You cut someone off. Someone else cuts you off. So it's a matter of how well you can recover as well from those situations. Come on over to the preset board. And we're going to pull up preset C. And then we'll do preset A later on. So over fences. This is where it can be a where... lot of fun or it can be a lot of challenge, depending on how you want to view it. So, um... I want you to think of Hunters and Equitation over Fences classes as very pretty show jumping. So in show jumping in real life, the goal is speed and accuracy. In a Hunter or Equitation class, speed is not prioritized at all. So especially in Star Stable, where, again, we don't have a lot to go off of, the goal is to jump your jumps as centered as straight and as smooth as possible. So centeredness, straightness, smoothness. Lots of S sounds for you to remember. Um, so what does the, all of that mean? So we'll start off with centeredness. So how close are you to the very, very center of the jump? Um, actually, you know what? We're gonna use this one, sorry. So this jump right here is nice because it has the two lines in the middle of it. So how close are you to the exact middle of the jump? That is what centeredness refers to. Okay, so right now I am pretty much completely centered over the exact middle of the rail, or the fence, pole, whatever it's called. Let's talk about straightness. So how perpendicular are you to the fence? So you need to be creating a right angle from your horse's body perpendicular to the fence pole and then let's talk about smoothness so smoothness is more about your approach how do you get to the jump before you actually jump it versus you know the performance over the fence itself uh so 
Okay. I'll do some examples of different things. So, if I approach my jump like this, uh, it's, it's kind of hard to demonstrate without actually going over it. So if I approach my jump like this, what would you say would be the fault or the main issue here? It looks like you're not perpendicular. Like, it looks like you're slanted, actually, from what I can see on my side. Correct. So then that would be out of the three three main things, straightness, centeredness, and smoothness, uh, which category would that fall under? You said straightness, centeredness, and smoothness? Mm hmm So it'd probably be straightness. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so then how about... I'm stuck in the thing. Oh, no. So then how about a situation like this? What would you say is the... Then that'd be, uh... Centeredness? Yeah. Very nice. So right now I'm like pretty much about to go over this barrel, but I want to be going in between the two hay bales, basically. So there's only one option left, right? Smoothness. So if I'm doing something like this, la 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 la, and then I go over and jump like that, and then, oh crap, I hit the fence. That's not good. So that would not be a very smooth approach. So the opposite of that would be... Coming down exactly straight, I'm not wiggling or anything. Go straight over the fence and then do whatever it needs to do next after that. Okay, so that would be our straightness, centeredness, and smoothness. So, to actually practice all of these concepts, I'm gonna have us do a little practice course. So, come on over this way and I'll show you the course. So even before beginning the course, there are some technicalities as well. So, your entrance to the course is important. So they're usually gonna ask you to enter at the walk and you can follow me. Enter at the walk and then you can pick up your trot pretty quick after. Couple of steps at the walk. So it's kind of a formality thing. So you're trotting about halfway uh, to the fence. Okay, so right about here is when I would then pick up my working canter or extended canter. So at the trot, uh, let me come back a little bit. So I'm at the trot. And then somewhere here-ish, you want to go from trot directly to the working canter as best as you can. So I didn't quite see that just because I was turned around, but that looks good. Right, so they what they don't want to see is trot... Canter, working canter. No, they want to see trot, working canter. So if you have like one canter step in there, just because of the way the gates work from a you know mechanical perspective, that's fine. It's just they don't want to see you doing multiple canter strides and then go to your working canter. Okay, so that's how you uh, start off your course. Now let's reset at the at the in gate here, they will call it the in gate or your starting gate. All right, so once again, we walk in and trot. And yes, you can follow me. Halfway through, work and canter. And then your first fence, this Andalusian is in the way because I don't have club hide on is this purple and white. Okay, then you're gonna turn right. Good. And then you're gonna aim for hay bale blue. Or what is this? Is it gray or black? Hay bale black. Okay, and then I'm kind of not doing the course totally correctly just cause I'm like watching. Optionally, you can do hay bale green, this first fence that we started off with. But if not, then um, you can just have your exit gate, for sake of practice, your exit gate can be over here if you only do fence one and two. If you don't do that, if you, if you do fence three, then your exit gate is where the wagon is. 
Who wants to go first? Eeny, meeny, miny, moe, catch no, a Geo no, by the toe. Okay, Geo's I first. I will. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought that was funny. Okay. Uh, if you don't want to go, that's totally fine. But um, in that case, let me actually... Let me actually get out of the way Let here. me set my camera up then, because I'm not trying to wreck it, but, you oh, know. No. Coolio. Okay. So the way that- Do the... I get an ice cream? Yes. <laughs> the way that the- Oh, okay. wait, Gio, come back for a second. <laughs> oh, 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 sorry. Okay. Oh, God. The way that the judges are gonna, you know, announce it for you to come in, they're gonna say, Ryder, you can begin whenever you're ready. And then you- Yeah, you just go whenever you're ready. Yeah. One thing to note also, too, the judges are gonna follow behind you, so don't freak out. Um, Because they need to see you, like- by following you, they can't see you from the sidelines, kind of thing. So, uh, Gio, whenever you're ready, you can begin. And for now, Fawn, if you want to actually follow, you can. That's totally fine. In the real deal, they're gonna want you to wait on deck. Okay, nice. Uh, canter transition. And yeah, the wagon is just kind of in the way there. Um, okay, so then they'll say something like, "Okay, that was um, that was Georgia Bluefield with a score of uh, 91 or something like that." And then on deck, uh, up next we have um, Zelda Deerway riding Iceman, and on deck is Rebecca Redfield riding Black Sabbath. Rider, whenever you're ready, you can begin. So that's how they'll phrase it, and then. Um, let, let's talk about Gio's performance really quickly. So really nice entrance. Um, so your nice walk, uh, trot, and then extended canter transition. Um, as you came around to the purple, now I will acknowledge the fact that these fences are really far away. When we do the real course, the real course for today with the A preset, um, it should be a little easier to navigate through those. So it is hard to see the see the turns where they're supposed to be if that makes any sense so you uh where geo i'm i'm having it on camera right now what i saw is that it looked like you turned a little bit late and then you had to veer in so that way you were straight on the straightness for this first purple one and then you were just on my end it looked like you were just a hair off to the right in terms of your centeredness your straightness looked good uh, and then coming around to uh, Hay Bale Black, same kind of thing. It looks like you turned a little late. This time you looked a little bit uh, slanted to the left on that one. And then as you came around to this last one, I think you actually turned early and then you had to veer out a little bit. Um, and then straightness and centeredness I think was okay on that one. And then your exit was la -di da just because I didn't really explain how to exit here, but we'll get to that when we get to the real course. Um, okay. If I was judging that officially, uh, the other judges probably wouldn't like me because I was so generous. <laughs> they can be, they can be kind of harsh on judging sometimes, so just keep in mind that. And I know it's hard also too because you're the writer and not the judge, so what you see is very different from what they see. So, just something to also keep in mind. Okay, fine. Um, let's see. I hope you're ready. Ready, you can begin whenever you're ready.
that was. I already like, know it already felt cool. <laughs> it's okay. It to me on my screen, it really didn't look that bad. Um, I will say, yeah. you know, I've I've definitely yeah. seen other people straight up not even know any of this stuff and they get scores of like 30s and 20s and stuff like that and it hurts you know so um i think this was a really nice starter performance and then when we get to the real course um you'll get more of a taste for it so let's see first jump um smooth very nice and smooth however uh kind of had the same uh situation as geo turned a little bit late and then you had to veer to the right you, to get to that jump. So as much as possible, when you peel off the fence, you want to be right exactly on that axis of where it is yeah. in the middle of that jump. Um, let's see. In terms yeah. of your straightness, yeah. that looked okay. But your centeredness, it looked a little bit off to the right. Second jump. Yeah, I'm stuck in the hay. Second jump. Same thing. Turned a little yeah. bit. Uh, a little bit late, had to veer in to get onto that axis, and then I think you were a little bit off to the right Four. in terms of centeredness. Straightness was fine. Last jump. Uh, I think, I think you turned early and then had to veer to the left. This time you were... Uh, at least on my screen, I believe you were slightly slanted to the right, so in terms of straightness, there was that. But overall, your body was still centered through the center of the jump. So that was our little practice course. Let's do the real deal. Hee hee. Oh, just. <laughs> Everyone's freaking out. It's okay. Uh, go ahead and reset to preset <laughs> A, please. The course that I sent you guys comes from WSFSE, and this organization... Uh, it stands for Winter, Spring, Fall, Summer what? Events. Okay, so they're a year-round organization kind of thing. Uh, so uh, I'm going to link their um, Discord server in the, the description of this video. So we're just borrowing it for practice purposes. So if you take a look at the picture in our uh, group chat, it is leaving out one very important piece of information, and that is courtesy circles. So I'll demonstrate a courtesy circle, and I'll tell you why it's needed. Uh, and you guys are allowed to follow me as well. So if you take a look at the diagram, you'll notice that fence number one is right here in game. It's very close to the in gate. So it wouldn't feel super realistic to just come in and do the yeah. first fence like this. Remember that the goal of these classes, these hunter and equitation classes, is very pretty show jumping. So you want to make this look as pretty as possible. They, it feels very kind of formal and technical and things like that. So you need to do a courtesy circle if the first fence is near the in gate. So you can go ahead and follow me. It's the same general procedure. You're going to walk in, pick up your trot a few steps later, and this courtesy circle is going to the right because you're approaching the fence in this direction. I know the camera's rotating on my screen, but right about here, when I hit the wall, I'm going to pick up my working canter. And then we peel off the fence and approach the first jump. So that's our courtesy circle. And then I'll walk you through the rest of this course. So, for now, I'm going to bring you down to the canter, because here's some practice tips for learning courses. So this is an eight fence, excuse me, nine fence course. So nine fences is kind of a lot. So I like to keep it slow, really look at, use my camera to really study my position of where I'm going to be going. And get the course right the first time, okay? Instead of going really fast and like, oh, I don't know where I'm going, that kind of thing. So just slow down. It's okay. Okay, here's fence number three. And then four comes right after. I do have some other tips, but for right now, I'm just going to uh, walk you through kind of manually here. Okay, one, two, three, four. Here's number five.
Good. And then, oops, I'm sorry. I kept messing this up in my practice too. Six. <laughs> okay, looping around here, number seven. So number seven, this is kind of what, it's, uh, what I was talking about earlier in the practice course. It's hard to see where this fence is, right? Because it's so far away. Okay, turn around to the right. My recommendation is when you're first learning a course, don't worry about the straightness or centeredness just yet. Worry about the order of the fences, then you can clean it up later. Finally, number nine. And I want you to pay attention where number nine is. Number nine is right here. And on the diagram, it says that your out gate, your exit gate is where we first started with our practice course so therefore you're gonna need a courtesy circle okay so something about like this la 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 and let's pretend we're done bam right you get the idea so then some other tips i have for you is let's reset at the entrance is when you start cleaning things up Go one fence at a time and layer it. Okay, so la 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 la. Let's pretend we're doing our courtesy circle properly. Doobity do. And we're only gonna practice fence number one until we're confident in the muscle memory. You're building muscle memory as you do this fence over and over again to get straight, centered, and smooth. Okay, so loop around in whatever way that you need. And then we'll do fence one again. So me, I was kind of off to the left there. So I want you to go over fence number one at least three times for now. just for the sake of this practice strategy. So my smoothness there, oi, horrendous. Centeredness, awful. But it's okay, just getting the general gist of it. Now what I want you to do is layer. You're gonna do fence number one and then fence number two. Okay, so it's a matter of only moving on to fence number two once you feel fence one is consistent enough. Okay, so we're moving on to number two. Which is all the way around. All the way around. Something like that. Yeah. And then do yeah. fence one and two again. Okay, once you feel confident with one and two, then do one, two, three. And then once you feel comfortable with that, one, two, three, four. So again, it's a whole process of layering and gaining the muscle memory for your performance. And then usually for me, what I like to do is I like to take it in about a half hour burst of practice and then like take a break or something and then come back to it or come back to it the next day or something like that. But whenever you obtain the course for the show, you wanna start practicing it right away because the more muscle memory you build up, of proper performance, as best as you can at least, the more likely your performance and your points and your score is gonna be higher on the day of. Uh, one thing that I wanted to add also, Fawn, is typically during the day of the show, like 30 minutes away, you'll notice that people will start practicing the course in groups. Um, just everyone like kind of collectively practicing it. So if you see that, it might be helpful to jump in with them. Um, and that's just basically like a dressage line going through all of the jumps and stuff. Geo brings up some really good points about that. Um, I will share my experience um, with my very first show. So my very first show was a hunter derby. Not really the wisest choice, but I didn't know any better. Um, so when I got to, you know, the starting gates and did my show, I started shaking. <laughs> uh, I was very nervous, even though I had practiced a lot, because it was my first show, right? I've never done anything like this, and, you know, I've never performed in Star Stable, like, 
four other people like this. So it was nerve wracking. But as I kept doing more and more shows and I got familiar with the rules and uh, watching other people perform and things like that, that's where I started getting the confidence. Now, I still get nervous. I still sometimes have the shakes um, and it does sometimes affect how I perform. But I, I will say that um, it can definitely get a lot easier as you continue to practice and um, yeah, as you continue to practice and uh, do more shows. Like I'm, I'm probably like, like I'm so excited to get started. And I know like I probably won't be able to jump right into like the big stuff. So I'll probably have to start out with like flats and like small things like that just to kind of get my toes dipped into the water a little bit and then kind of uh i guess span my wings into being able to do it more just so i can kind of get the feel for everything because i don't want to go in and kind of not know what i'm doing so i'm really thankful that you guys are here to help me and show me what to do because i don't want to go in and uh then like do like be upset with myself because I didn't know what to do when it's really not my fault since I didn't really know how to do stuff. So that's why I was looking into doing the uh, lesson and trying to learn how to do it. I think that it helps like having a group of people to go to shows with also because like anxiety it's so crazy to think about it, like, in a horse game, you know, like, with pixel ponies that you could get nervous, you know, doing things. But I think whenever you go at it at, like, a slow pace where you are here with us, you know, you're learning little things about here and there. So you're preparing for what you're going to see uh, when you do go to your first show and then the next shows after that and such. Um, but then also another tip that I have is to not go to like shows alone if that's one of the things that you feel might help you to have people that you know. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, I was absolutely really lucky to have a group of friends that, you know, I competed with there for a long time. And um, I think that helped a lot. But even still, I think it's taken about a year and a half to like not have my hands shake. <laughs> um, yeah. when I'm doing a show but that's also why I don't do show jumping or uh, hunter jumper um, just quite yet right because I want those nerves to kind of go away first gone. Yeah. yeah yeah that's why I like hunter and equitation stuff because it's it's slower you have time to think about it versus like jumpers you, you're going so fast mm -hmm. and if you like you know you're based on time in show jumping mm -hmm. so you're against the clock kind of thing so that i find more nerve-wracking than hunters and equitation mm -hmm. but yeah definitely i agree with you dip your toes into it you know go gently uh don't do what i did and start with a hunter derby as the first show because one hunter derbies are long two hunter derbies are harder than what we're doing right now so um as somebody who didn't really quite understand everything uh, in the beginning uh don't do what i did start with some flat shows then start observing over fences shows and then maybe do some green hunters shows so like really easier courses and courses that are not as long and then start going up to like working hunter and then a hunter derbies and equitation and things like that so that order of what i just said is probably what I would recommend to a new player in terms of the the difficulty of courses and things like that. All right, so we're starting off with our mock flat class here. We'll keep the flat class short so we can do the over fences part. Uh, so uh, all riders have checked in for the under saddle portion. You may now enter the arena tracking left at the walk. Riders, this is your class. You are now being judged at the walk. And as a little 
uh, a little thing for practice purposes, I am going to uh, kind of break break character a little bit to give Fawn some scenarios to respond to. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Trot, please trot. decision. Riders, please walk. I'll walk. So for for the viewers, um, what I just did was cut Fawn off. So her response was to circle away from me. So, yes, that means on her screen she was clipping into me, and yes, as the judge, we would have been clipping into each other. But in a situation like that, if you have to clip through somebody to get away from them because they cut you off, that's better than staying there and clumping for however many steps. Canter, please canter. Riders, please walk in reverse directions at the walk. So for the viewers, I just kind of messed that up. I didn't mean to, but my reverse was way too small. <laughs> uh, when you do a reverse, and Fawn, just ignore this. When you do a reverse, again, you want to have a nice big bear shape, nice big teardrop shape. Tap, 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 tap. And Fawn, I am now resuming my character. Good choice. I'll trot, please trot. viewers at home don't do this no curling in a flat class especially for this long canter please canter so in this scenario right now I can already tell yeah fawn got a little close so if you see someone behind you that is getting really close to you, don't worry about that as much as if um, you were approaching someone else, if that makes any sense. But still, like, that's not good for either of you. <laughs> yeah. And I am going to make my way to the center.
Riders, please walk and make your way to the center of the arena with your backs facing away from the judges. Well, I guess the better way to say it is facing, you should be facing towards the judge. Okay, so I kind of yeah. tricked you here on how to approach this. So, uh, you should be... F I kind of said it badly, so no wonder you guys are like that. But you should be facing this way. So you should be facing towards your judge. Um, and then... Uh, so let's say the judge is right here. You want to leave... You want to leave... About this much of space yes. away from the judge. Uh, so your horse's nose is, like, here-ish as well. So that way you're not, like, parallel side-by-side uh, -side with them. Uh, so go ahead and just readjust right now. That's totally fine. Okay. So here is another way that I tricked you guys a little bit. Uh, so I am right here. I'm facing this way, and I'm asking you guys to, you know, face towards me. But you guys were on the opposite side of the arena that I'm calling for. So, if you, if you were, if I called you while you were over here, it would have been very easy, right? You just bloop in this, into your spot like this. Very easy. But you guys were all the way on the other side. So what happens when that happens is you're at the walk. And you need to start cutting to the inside of the arena as much as you can because they will actually penalize you for taking too long to get into the lineup. Okay, so in this situation, I'm cutting a lot of the arena off and since I was tracking right, I want to make sure I'm still moving to the right as I come into the lineup here. Make sure you don't clip through anybody as well. You halt, and then you take your hands away from the keyboard. No more touching your mouse, no more touching your keys, because in the lineup, they will penalize you for doing this. They will penalize you for doing this, going back and forth like this. They will penalize you for rearing. They will penalize you for dismounting. So that's why I say take your hands and, and, and your everything away from the keyboard and mouse. Okay, but otherwise, in terms of the class itself, uh, looked pretty nice. What they'll do is they'll actually also go around and look at you guys and they'll inspect you and your dress code. So I'll just pretend to do that right now. La 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 la. And they'll take some photos too and stuff. I have your results for the under saddle portion. In second place, we have uh, Georgia Bluefield riding uh, Pumpkin Spice. And in first place, we have Zelda Deerway riding Iceman. Congratulations. Um, I'll give you a few moments to school for the over fences portion, and then we'll begin. Okay, riders, please exit the arena. We'll get started with our first rider. Our first rider will be Georgia Bluefield riding Pumpkin Spice, and on deck will be Zelda Deerway riding Iceman. Let me come over here pretend to be a judge. Ryder, you can begin whenever you're ready. Um, can I be the example of how not to, to do this? Sure. Okay, thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Wee! <laughs> I'll leave my mic on for commentary. Okay. My singing. <laughs> do do do. Sing it with me back. Do, 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 do. 
Do -de -do. Do -si -do. Oh yeah. <laughs> Does he know it? Dance with me. Yeah. Okay, welcome back, <laughs> Fawn. Oh now. shoot. <laughs> welcome back, oh, Fawn. Oh my gosh, you should have seen what you. happened on my screen. <laughs> that was hilarious. Okay. <laughs> Alright, the runner is taking a run. <laughs> uh, I. Uh. Woo! <laughs> yes. <laughs> Here is my exiting circle. Oh no! Yes. Oh no! <laughs> yes, ma'am. Oh yeah! Oh, oh yeah! <laughs> Give me this shiny blue. <laughs> <laughs> that was Georgia Bluefield with a score of thirty-five. <laughs> and um, I need to reset my jumps, but on on deck, uh, our next rider is gonna be Zelda Deerway riding Iceman, and on deck is Rebecca Redfield riding Black Sabbath. Okay, um, let me come over here. All right, take some deep breaths. Visualize yourself performing very well, and rider, you can begin whenever you're ready. I can tell this is already going poorly for me. bounced off the wall there. Lucky for you, I did not see. And I kind of, like, totally forgot how to exit. That was Zelda Deerway riding Iceman with a score of, I'm gonna make something up, um, 85. Okay. So, overall, you got through it! Right? I think that is the first step, is getting through the course. All right, so I want to uh, congratulate you on that for sure. And uh, you made it through this entire lesson, very long. I didn't think it was gonna take this long, but I'm glad we all got through it. Uh, so here is some final feedback for this evening and then I'll end off the video. So uh, come on over here and reset towards the beginning. All right, so your opening, uh, what's it called? Your opening courtesy circle. Um, so in general, you got the shape of it right because you're circling around towards this way. So remember that your courtesy circle needs to be half trot, half extended canter. So um, from, he from the entrance to the first wall, and if you'd like, you can follow me. You're at a trot. I know it takes a while, but it's like formality. Okay, and then you pick up your extended canter. So you got that, at least. Um, your approach to fence number one. Very nice. I really liked how that looked. Okay. Fence number... Fence number two. So one thing I didn't tell you, and I semi-did this on purpose, but also because um, 
I didn't include it in the lesson plan. <laughs> um, fence number two. So, um, what you did is you created an inside turn. Okay, so you pretty much cut off half of the arena to get to this fence. Now, what you need to do is, let's say, okay, I did fence number one, la 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 la. You need to gravitate, pretend the fence is a magnet and your horse is attracted to it. You need to stay on the fence as much as possible. Okay, so therefore, your approach to fence two should have been something like this. Okay, so... Oh, this looks a lot easier this way, too. Yeah, exactly. So that's where the pretty show jumping comes into play as well. Uh, let's see. In terms of the straightness and centeredness... Three to four is a hard one, and this also, this course in general is not really the greatest course to practice on, but whatever. Okay, so three and four, fine enough. Um, let's see, five. I think that, I don't quite remember, I think you were kind of inside, like very close to the standard here, but also five to six, you have to literally turn in the air, which is hard. Okay. I think for seven, you kind of did the same thing, uh, where you created the inside turn. So again, you want to stay magnetized to the rail. Okay, I'll come through here. Uh, I think this one was a little off-centered as well. I don't quite remember how that went. But yep, um, here at least from fence seven to eight, it's fine to turn a little earlier rather than going down all the way to the fence just because it's a little bit tighter of a turn um fence number eight that's a tough one too just because that fence comes so quick off the rail you only have like three or four strides to you know adjust yourself and then you have to turn right after all right so then number nine and number nine um, I think you were off to one side and a little bit slanted, I think. Again, don't quite remember just because it goes so fast. So, courtesy circle here, same thing. You're going to be at your extended canter this time. Go down to trot. So, half and half. Your entrance courtesy circle is the opposite of the exit courtesy circle vice versa. So trot, extended canter, or extended canter, trot. And then you also had a nice walk exit as well. So they do need to see you walk out as well, um, instead of like trotting out of it. So just make sure you save yourself plenty of time to walk out of it. But okay, so that was your first hunter flat class. That was your first hunter over fences class as well. So congratulations to Fawn for that really great lesson. Um, do you have any final questions that you'd like to, um, that you'd like to ask? I think that's pretty much, I know like with the bows, so you said red's for kicking, blue is for like a stallion, and pink is for a mare. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I know like in the roleplay thing for me, cool is ice here, he is a stallion that I might use as like a breeding stallion later. So I get, does it matter the type of like blue or pink or anything like that? Does it have to be like a navy blue? Um, or is it just kind of like bright things saying like, hey, I'm kind of dangerous? Uh, no, it doesn't matter as long as it's, you know, obviously pink, as long as it's obviously blue. Um, you know, you, you just can't use like an orange or a, or a yellow or purple or something like that. Um, okay. Yep. Okay. I think that's pretty much it. Now with the jump over the fence stuff, the jumping, um, the only thing with that is like, it might take me a little bit, like especially with work learning a course so quickly, my centering and stuff, I'll probably have to like work on that more as soon as I like get used to doing courses more. Oh, Which yeah. I, I'm pretty sure when it comes to, like, the big shows and stuff, you kind of have, like, a lot of time. Not really a lot of time, but you might have, like, a week or a few days to prepare, I guess. 
Oh yeah, absolutely. You yeah. have so much more time in a real life situation. You did a crash course yeah. today in like two and a half hours or something like that. And you did really well for a course that's nine fences long. And for the fact that you only practice for like 15 or 20 minutes, it's good. You didn't go off course and you, you know, tried your best to maintain the concepts that we talked about. So that's really good. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, what I said earlier about yeah. learning the course as soon as it comes out, take that advice. Cause you don't want to wait until the oh. day of the show. You don't want to take, you know, uh, the day before the show to try to learn the course. You don't want to learn the course, you know, why, by watching someone well, else either. Yeah. So um, yeah, take advantage um, of time. I think that's pretty much all my questions. Like the bow ones, like that's like the really the ones that stuck up to me, especially since I might be possibly a user of the bows. Yeah, absolutely. And hopefully, you know, you'll get situations where people will respect those bows and you know, just you know jaunt along and you're fine you just get to hang out on the rail the whole time because people are moving away from you <laughs> so yeah, yeah. okay i see uh, that like also as a good thing is like hey stay away from me so <laughs> yeah. might make not not want to try to get out of it, but it might make my part a little bit easier. Yeah, exactly. All right, everybody, that will be it for today's lesson. I hope you learned something new. Thank you to Fawn for coming out, and I'm so glad that she was able to ask her questions and learn so many new things about the realistic roleplay competition scene. Thank you to Gio also as well for your advice. Very, very helpful, and I'm glad we could all do this together as a nice little friend group. So thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, everybody.